Welcome to the Ultimate Home Network Project. In this project, I'm going to be replacing my existing home consumer Wi-Fi router with a fully spec Unify system and doing a few other upgrades along the way. If you haven't checked out part one where I outline the full plan, have a watch now. In this part, I need to do some prep work to get ready for the new access points, as well as fixing up some other stuff that I'm not really too happy with. Specifically, I'm going to be terminating the last four ethernet ports from my room to the patch panel. I never used to use these ports and so I never had the need to actually terminate them at the patch panel, but in the interest of completion, I want to do this today. I also want to move an ethernet wall plate slightly further down in my room so it sits in line with the power outlet that's next to it. This will involve some replastering. Thirdly, I want to relocate another ethernet wall plate to where the coaxial cable comes in where the ISP delivers internet as opposed to up in the cupboard where it currently is. Fourthly, I want to run a new cable and patch panel to behind the TV in the lounge room. That part of the house doesn't have traditional attic access, and so I'll need to run the cable alongside the outside of the house. Finally, I want to test all the ethernet ports to ensure that they're running at the full one gigabit per second speed. I've noticed that some of the ports don't fully work, and so I need to repatch them if they're not working properly. The first thing I did was terminate four ethernet cables up in the patch panel in the attic. I don't think I'll ever need to use these ones, but for completion's sake I wanted every single patch panel and every single port in the house to be working if I ever did want to use them. Ethernet cables generally transfer data at four different speeds. 10 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, 1000 megabits per second, which is also known as 1 gigabit per second, and 10,000 megabits per second, which is also known as 10 gigabits per second. A range of factors can determine which speed they run at, including cable type and quality, termination quality, and also the equipment on either end. Ideally, everything in my house would run at the highest possible speed, which is 10 gigabits per second. But in 2019, with the equipment I chose in part one, this isn't possible at the moment. So what I'm doing is aiming for every ethernet cable run to be at one gigabit per second. This meant that all the terminations to the patch points at each end of the cables had to be a really high quality. With an ethernet cable, there are eight wires within the cable and each is colored a specific way. Each color has to match up with the color of the termination on the patch point. There can't be any mismatches in the colors, any kinks or breaks in the cable, or otherwise the cable won't run at that full one gigabit per second speed. For some reason, I found this impossible to do, and so I eventually bought a cable tester, which at least told me which of those eight wires wasn't working properly. Each time I terminated a cable, I inevitably tested it and something had gone wrong, and so frustratingly I found myself terminating the cables two or even three times. The next item on my list was to move the top of the ethernet wall plate in my room down a few centimeters to match with the power point, as this was something that had bothered me for quite a while. Using a small plaster saw, this wasn't really too hard, but I then had to patch up the plaster where the wall plate used to sit. I still need to sand this part down and also paint over the top of it. My next two items both involve work in the attic, which is a hot, cramped, and really infuriating affair. The first one was to move the original wall plate that I dropped in the room where the ethernet comes in from the ISP. When I originally ran this wall plate, I really struggled to get the ethernet cables to go all the way down the wall from the attic and then out where the coaxial cable for the um, ISP internet came in. Because this wall was an exterior wall of the house, it was almost impossible to get to the edge of the attic as the roof slants down. And so if you're in the attic and the roof slants down, it's really hard to get in that small space. And so because it's a small space, I also couldn't get the drill down to actually drill a hole to put the cables down. So years ago when I first ran these cables, I eventually gave up and just ran them down through the cupboard which was next to it, really easy to access, and then I just ran the cables out of the cupboard door. This was far easier, but I hated having cables coming out of that cupboard and it was really hard to access the wall plate to re-plugging things. So then I tried to run them down the same wall again this time and yep, I had the same problems. So my eventual solution was to run them down the cupboard, but instead of putting the wall plate in the cupboard at the top, I had the cables run down through the cupboard like this and through all the shelves in there and then go through down the bottom at the wall and come out in the room perpendicular on the wall to where I originally wanted them to come out. This turned out to be a far easier solution and still satisfies my original requirements for moving the ports and having them being really accessible. The next step was running an ethernet cable to the back living room of the house. Because of the way this house was constructed, the back rooms don't have an attic space. This meant I needed to run the cable through the attic from where the patch panel is and push it outside of the house run it along the outside of the house and then push it back through to where I actually wanted the cable to end up in the living room. The hardest part of this process was, once again, getting right to the edge of the attic where the roof slopes down. 
I literally had to lie down and crawl into the spider webs, the possum droppings and insulation to get that cable outside of the house. Eventually I found a spot where there was already a small gap and so I managed to actually push the cable through and I didn't have to drill any new holes. This meant from the outside I could get in a ladder, grab the cable, run it down the outside of the house along a drain pipe and then tuck it under the house. I pushed it along the house and then at the other end I measured where I wanted the patch panel to come out in the living room and then I drilled a small hole through from the outside. Fortunately my measurements were pretty good and so the cable ended up exactly where I wanted it and I just pushed it through and popped out the other side. My final step was to test each of these cable runs with a, with a cable tester to ensure they're running at full gigabit speeds. Unfortunately about half of them weren't running so I needed to repatch quite a few cables. I spent a whole bunch of time repatching them and finally I got to the point where every single run in the house was reporting at gigabit speeds. Perfect. So that's it for this part. We've terminated a whole bunch of cables, we've moved two wall plates, we've run a new cable through the living room and finally we've got everything running at full gigabit speeds. Excitingly, this means in part 3 we can get to unboxing all the equipment that I ordered and set it all up in the network rack. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Technologetics so you don't miss part 3.